Hello and welcome to Wednesday in the Word with Roger and Cheryl. We are delighted you're with us today and we just want you to uh, get your Bible, your notebook and uh, join with us. We are in Lesson uh, 24. I think so. <laughs> lesson 24 of uh, Apostle and the High Priest of our Confession. We know who that is. His name is Jesus and uh, it's good. Hallelujah. Because he's the one uh, that has redeemed us, that paid the price to redeem us. And so here today, as we come back into this lesson, uh, we may be able to finish up today, finish the lessons up. Uh, but uh, it's been an awesome time uh, for Cheryl to be teaching and bringing us forth uh, some things on that Apostle and High Priest. I'm going to tell you one more time. Uh, I did it a couple of lessons ago. But uh, and when we think about the Apostle and the High Priest, uh, the apostle being the one that, uh, the one that goes before, the one that goes, uh, the actual meaning of the word uh, apostle there is uh, that that is first, uh, not so much first above anybody of the other ministries, but uh, there's a positional thing uh, in the spirit that that is first. It, in other words, it, it's a R Roman word actually, and goes back to those. The, the Romans would send what they called apostle into a place and they would prepare the area, the people, uh, for the arrival of the king. So uh, whenever we think about that, he's our apostle, uh, then we think about that God has come, he came first into our lives to prepare us for the arrival of the king. That's why he says he's king of kings and lord of lords. Then we think about the high priest who uh, entered in once for all. That took the blood of, uh, of the Lamb. He was our high priest that took the blood behind the veil uh, and put it on the mercy seat. And now because of that, once for all, we are redeemed forever and ever. So uh, it's exciting, been exciting to go through these lessons. And uh, Cheryl's going to uh, take it and uh, if... Unless Holy Spirit goes deeper, we'll we'll just try to wind it up today. Uh, we'll come back with another serve, series, uh, another uh, thought next week. But uh, uh, Cheryl, it's been awesome to uh, join with you in teaching these classes. Uh, we're going to pray. I want to pray for you. I hope you have realized the love of God. And... If not, I hope you do before this class is over today. Because uh, God so loved the world. And I want you to call on the name of the Lord. If you've not done that, if you've not made, it, made Him the Lord of your life, I want you to do that. Uh, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. That's what the Scripture says. That's not, I didn't make that up. I didn't try to make it easy. It's just that simple. Uh, believe with your heart, confess with your mouth. Then there's an ongoing process of... Uh, bringing your your mind, will, and emotions, your soul into the uh, realization of that uh, of that salvation. But God is in control. Father, in the name of Jesus, pray with us right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for those today that are sitting here, listening, and that are maybe taking notes, maybe uh, maybe not just sitting back trying to figure us out. But God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, that you deal with their hearts, that you. Uh, God, show them the love of the Father that's in that's in them. Uh, and God, we thank you, Lord, that you do that in the mighty name of Jesus today. Thank you for anointing Cheryl to speak words of life here on this broadcast today. And we give you praise and thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll take it away. <laughs> well, we have been talking about judgment in this last a segment of considering the Apostle and High Priest and I hope that uh, some things have been established in your thoughts that have taken the idea of judgment into a proper perspective because judgment is not um, not something to be feared unless we have been a person who has really done deeds that deserve some type of uh, severe de dealing to adjust the situation but judgment um, with corrective action is just always necessary to bring us into true life and peace 
and we talked a, a great deal about the fact that Jesus Christ took our judgment, took the judgment for all humanity on himself in his sufferings and on the cross and in his death. Now, in, um, in doing that, when he took our judgment, he also didn't stay on the cross. He rose again into new life. And because of that, when we accept the judgment that Jesus took on our behalf, and we accept the gifts that he has offered to us of, of forgiveness of sins and righteousness and the abundance of grace, then um, <clears throat> we never again have to fear a judgment. Um, it's not to say that God won't correct us with things because part of maturing is absolutely correction. And so uh, I've thought about this often. Sometimes people just want other people to suffer, you know, especially if they feel they have been wronged by a person. They want that person to suffer. But I was reading in the Bible this morning, I think it was, um, that Peter came to Jesus and he said, I guess Jesus was talking about some things, and he said, well, how many times am I supposed to forgive a person? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. And the point is, is that forgiveness is a never-ending thing. It is a lifestyle that we, we have been forgiven so much ourselves. If you don't think you've ever done something that needed forgiveness, well, you might think again, because we all have. You know, we've been hurt, we've hurt others. That's how the human man is, uh, especially without God. But even sometimes as a Christian, we mess up and we hurt somebody else. So it's to our benefit to walk in forgiveness, whether it's forgiveness to ourself or someone else, but also forgiveness towards God. You know, God gets blamed for a lot of things. Um, oh, I mean, he just gets blamed for a lot of things. I've been angry at God so many times I felt like I could have bit nails into. <laughs> but it was because there were a lot of things I didn't know about God. And over time, he has taught me so much. Um, so I want to say this right now. Don't be frustrated with yourself. And don't be feel overwhelmed. Don't allow feelings of being overwhelmed to um, encompass you. Because they're just a feeling. It's not the truth. But here's the thing. Is that... Um, <clears throat> We have a great opportunity to receive everything that God has given to us to bring us into life and peace. And we have to grow and walk step by step. And as we seek the Lord, as we read the Holy Scriptures and all of these things and begin to understand the ways of God, life really does get easier. And you don't have to keep feeling the weight of the things you've done wrong, as Roger talked about at the end of our sessions. But I want to um, leave a few scriptures with you. First in Psalms 9.16, it says, The Lord is known by the judgments which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Now, I particularly wanted to read this because... Um, it says the Lord is known by the judgment which he executes. So there's a knowing of the Lord that we can come to by understanding the judgments of God. Um, but the second part, the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. You know, most of the time we bring our own problems on ourselves. We really do. We make bad decisions because we haven't taken the time to think things through or find out what God has to say about it. But um, God's judgments will always be true and righteous. His decisions, that's what judgment means, His decisions 
also sentencing whatever corrective action he deems necessary. It's going to be out of what is true and righteous, what will really bring us into a place where we can have life and peace. Psalms 25, 9 and 10 says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. All of them. All of the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Now, we know from the New Testament, if you have read the Bible, that uh, when Jesus went back to the Father, he sent Holy Spirit to guide us. He says he will guide us into all the truth. Here in the first covenant, it says that God will uh, guide the meek person or the humble person in judgment, in making the right decisions, in knowing how to conduct ourselves in life. It says to the meek and the humble, he will teach his way. Now, there's either going our own way or there's going God's way. That's it. Our way or God's way. So if we want to go down the path that leads to life that we've talked about in the other lessons, then God has promised to teach us His way. If you have a teachable spirit and you really want to know the truth and the right way of doing things, God has promised He'll teach us that, and He will. And what, what we can be assured of is that Every path that God leads us on. See, we've talked several times about uh, there's a way or a pathway that seems right to man, but the end is death and destruction. But there's also a way called the highway of holiness or the narrow way that leads to life that we can walk on. That's the path that God will take us on. Uh, David in the famous Psalm of 23 says he leads me in the paths, plural, of righteousness. And this is God's direction. It says that all of God's paths are mercy and truth. It doesn't say God's paths are to take you down where you're going to get beaten up, uh, bruised and blistered. No, all of God's paths are mercy and and truth, and they lead to righteousness. All right, Amos 5.24 says, But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness is a mighty stream. I love this verse, and I know there's depth to it that I don't know yet, but I find this the most refreshing verse. When I think of uh, judgment running down as the waters, I think of standing under a waterfall on a hot day and just letting, or standing out in the rain. Um, as a young girl, I used to love to, love thunderstorms. I loved them. And I used to love to just stand out in the rain and let the rain just wash over me. But um, water, of course, symbolizes a lot of things. But it can be a refreshment. When, when it's a hot summer day and you've worked and you sweated, just to have that water run down over you just feels so good. Or when you're so, so thirsty and you take a drink of water, it just refreshes you and brings a new life and um, energy to your body or your soul or spirit, whatever the case may be. Water, of course, washes away in impurities and that is exactly the purpose of judgment to wash away impurities to get rid of the yucky stuff um, you know how miserable you feel when you're sick well that's the same way when there's impurities in our soul that need to be cleansed and removed out of us it's the sickness of the soul and that's what judgment does. It comes down like that water that washes us. The scripture says that we are washed by the word of God. It comes in and it washes us. And it pushes all those impurities out so that pure river of life can flow within us and through us. 
um, water can give us direction. <laughs> it sounds a little funny, but if you watch an old cowboy movie, sometimes they'll say, just follow the river and it'll take you right to such and such. So following the river, it's going to take us somewhere. The Bible in the end book of the revelation of Jesus Christ talks about the river of life and how there's trees by that river of life to bring life and healing to the nations. That's the purpose of all of this that we've been talking about in judgment and sin and righteousness. Getting ourselves in a right relationship with God where we can be that river of life that out of us can, throw, can flow um, life to someone else. Where they can come and take of our fruit of the Spirit and gain peace and righteousness and understanding of God. The real true understanding of who this God of love really is. Um, Psalms 89, 14, and 15 says, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Now think about this. Justice and judgment are the habitation or the dwelling place of his throne. When God, you know, the throne symbolizes authority. And God is the authority, the highest authority. Amen. He has delegated authority to um, the body of Christ and so forth. But he is the highest authority. And justice and judgment live there at his throne. Now we have this God of love who is the voice and the, the very, really, personification of authority where there is justice. He wants justice for us. Amen. That's what it's all about. All of this that we've been talking about is to bring justice into our life. And if you remember... <clears throat> There's many scriptures, but the one we talked about in Isaiah said he would justify many. That means he will bring them to justice. How did he do that? Through his own sacrifice of his own body, his physical body, to be the sin so that we could be free. And now, someone has said, I've heard it said by many different people, the word justify means just as if I'd never sinned. And that's the truth, because God doesn't remember our sin. And when those thoughts come up of things you've done wrong, you need to cast them down. Don't accept them. They're not the truth anymore. If Jesus Christ is your Lord, then His thoughts towards us are beautiful and loving and kind. Um, the scripture says that God never desired death. He doesn't delight in the death of anyone. That's not his way. That's right. Uh, he didn't invent death. That had to come about as a penalty of a grave disobedience because that one man's disobedience affected all of humanity, every single human being that has ever been born. That's why it had to be such a grave thing uh, such really like a stark reality but it's done with now the penalty has been paid we don't have to live in that realm anymore so um, mercy and truth shall go before thy face and um, <clears throat> you know the face is like well it can be a lot of things you on the person's face you can see anger you can see love, you can see joy, you can see perplexity. <laughs> it's a face that is looking in a certain direction. Um, but I thought this was interesting. It says, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Well, it seems almost out of place here, but here's the thing. The joyful sound that they know is that justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. In other words, his throne is centered right in the middle of justice and judgment. Yep. 
It's right there. Because as we said in an earlier lesson, God is the only one qualified to make those decisions regarding a person's, person's life. He's the only one justified to be able to pronounce a sentence or a corrective action on a person's life. And it's always going to be <clears throat> out of his throne, which is a throne of righteousness. It's a throne of truth. It's a throne of mercy. And it's a throne of justice and judgment. When we understand that and we know that, it can bring forth and should bring forth a joyful sound out of us. And then we can be assured that the light of God's countenance shines upon us. And that's a beautiful thing because that was part of the blessing that was prayed and given over the, and still to this day is my understanding, that they give the blessing, shine thy countenance upon us, you know, lift up your countenance upon us. Um, when God's looking at us, he looks at us through the eyes of love because he is love. That's the only way he sees us. When we feel so condemned and so discouraged and so distraught, God's not seeing that. He's seeing the blood of Jesus Christ, which has cleansed us from every sin, every stain, everything having to do with it. Um, here is another <clears throat> promise of God, Psalms 103.66. It says, the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. If you're having a problem with depression or oppression or you're feeling condemned or beaten down, go to the Lord. It says he executes or he sends forth. He, it's almost like you can see an executioner going to cut off that oppression, mm -hmm. cut off that condemnation. And um, that's what he will do and has done for us and wants us to walk free of all of that. Everything in the Bible, everything, is something that should, we should take consideration of Jesus, our Apostle and High Priest. Because it's all about Jesus Christ. Um, everything. So what is our confession regarding judgment before our apostle and high priest our confession is so important because that's what god works with jesus takes this confession before the father and then the father can take care of the situation and so here is our confession just a part of it there's lots more that could be said but here's a starter confession for you jesus took my judgment my sins are washed away and removed far from me. I walk in new life. I am blessed by the gift of righteousness, and I stand upright and boldly and reverently before my Father. I live in peace and in the love that God has for me. And this is how we're to live our lives from this point on. You do not have to accept any kind of condemnation, no kind of guilt. Guilt is a terrible enemy. But Jesus Christ, when he took it on the cross, he took all of that with him. You can walk free of it. And I'm going to let Roger finish up our lesson today. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me all again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes you and me white as snow. No other fountain, no, nothing but the blood of Jesus. How did he make us righteous? How did, how did Jesus Christ's death on that cross make us righteous? He became the sacrifice for our sins and all our sins and iniquities were cast upon him. I want to read a little bit in, uh, in uh, 1 John 
uh, the little little John's first John the first chapter uh, and I want to start reading about verse 5 and just real quickly go through this because I want you to understand the apostle and high priest of your confession paid the price to to earn that title he didn't just take it on he, he was already uh, God from the beginning. He was already a part of the Father from the beginning. Uh, he and the Father are one from the beginning of creation. So, He didn't need another title. He didn't need it. But because we needed a Savior, He became the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. So now we can enjoy the salvation that God's given us. In the fifth verse of the first chapter of of John, uh, of First John, uh, the first chapter, it says, "This then is the measure which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness." And Cheryl dealt with. The darkness brought he brought us out of darkness into light, uh, and there, there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now, today you have that choice to walk in the light. You have the choice to say, "I have, I'm, I'm going to receive him as my apostle, my high priest of my." Confession, I'm going to walk in that. And if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, uh, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, and you're walking in the light, confess that, say that. I'm walking in the light. Amen. Um, if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us. His Son cleanses us from all Somebody say all, all from all sin. Now, like I, I've said several times through this session with Cheryl, uh, that he didn't come to bring us condemnation. He didn't come to magnify our sin. He came to magnify our salvation, our relationship with him. If we say that we have no sin, now what does that mean? That doesn't mean that we're going about trying to hide sin. But just like we've said uh, before, uh, in one of the lessons, Cheryl talked about uh, talking about thinking like like uh, when the end, when force of the enemy came like it did to Eve, uh, talking with us uh, and and saying uh, God's not said and all this stuff, and then we try to think we can do it better than God. How do we do that? We reject we reject God, resist God, and we think we can do it better. You can't. Hallelujah. He's already done. There's no other name under heaven whereby man must be saved. So our salvation comes through that name. So if we say that we have, have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, now confession is something that you realize is uh, is sin. Now I'm not talking, when we're talking about sin, I'm not talking about, well, you, you went out and... Uh, uh, you got you hit your finger with a hammer. And you said a, what we commonly call a curse word. I'm not. I'm not talking about what you do. I'm not talking about whether or not you're smoking cigarettes or whether uh, or even drinking alcohol. You shouldn't do those things because they're not good for your body. But I'm talking about unbelief. I'm talking about not receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Not whenever you receive Him into your life, then you've got help to overcome all those other things. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from how much? Oh. From all unrighteousness. Now, now He didn't come and say, "Well, I'm going to take this little thing away from Him. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that uh, that in them." You know, sometimes we think, "Well, you know, God can forgive me of this, but I don't know if He can handle this one." No. All your sins have been forgiven. You've been already been judged. Amen. Where will you judge? We talk about the judgment seat of Christ. Let me tell you where your judgment seat was. It was on that cross. Yes. It where all sin and iniquity was laid on him and he 
Come on, on that cross. Oh my my. You got something you want to no. say? Amen. I know. You distracted me. <laughs> if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That concludes our program. That concludes this uh, this session on uh, Apostle and High Priest. We love you. We bless you. And we will see you next week. God bless. <laughs>